Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my three obligatory videos are done for the day because it was Q&A days for those of you who want informative content. So go check that out where I answer your questions. And for those of you who want unique content, go check out my Patreon site I just opened up. But now it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And at least a dozen of my subscribers have wired me to Jeff Cavalier has uh, clowned V-Shrink yet again. So let me put on my plus five out of weapons with him. Work on skilling up my craft in a little bit and let's talk about this. Now a lot of people are going to go, Jason, man, you sure are going hard on V-Shrink lately. And I'm calling him V-Shrink because he looks like he shrunk up. He doesn't even lift. But I'm going hard on him because this is a guy who's doing a lot of marketing who really isn't qualified to teach people how to perform basic exercises. And you know what? If the guy would take the time to go learn some basic exercises, would learn how to do some training programming, I wouldn't uh, be a dick at all. I would actually be nice to him. Just like I'm nice to pretty much everyone who's not conning people who actually knows the basics of exercise science, people who know how to perform the basic lifts, who know how to program them, how to teach them, I'm usually pretty nice to those people because they're actually helping people. It's like I'm occasionally critical of Jeff Cavalier. Yeah, I'm occasionally critical of him, but not very often because the guy is smart. He's really smart, and he's had a lot of coaching experience. Uh, and I'd say as far as YouTubers go, which is kind of going to be the point of this video, it's kind of going to be the point of this video, uh, he probably has the most knowledge of human anatomy and physiology. I don't think there's anyone else that I can think of off the top of my head in YouTube fitness who's on that level with a and P. I I can't think of anybody. So, yeah, I tend to not really give him a hard time. Why would I? Other than sometimes the exercise selection, he'll say, well, you could try this instead, and then I'll pick him up and be like, that's a, that's a BS exercise, Jeff, and you know it. You're a strength coach. You know that's a BS exercise. Chest flies. Seriously? Are you serious, bro? But outside of stuff like that, or, oh, well, if you're going to bench high on your chest, don't go all the way down. Well, why would you bench high on your chest, Jeff? You know better. You know, stuff like that. But ultimately, he often corrects himself. It's kind of uh, like he did in this video. Because what happened? The shrink took the criticism that Jeff gave him, and he corrected the way he was doing that silly exercise from the side where he turns his body into a fly. Turns his body into a fly. And it still turns out to not be a useful exercise and Jeff clowned him yet again and anyone who hasn't seen it it's the current newest video up on the uh, Athlean X website he comes in and he clowns him with this guy Jesse again and basically he says look if you're gonna do it this is how you do it right what you're doing isn't gonna work I need to unteach everyone who's learning this and you know the scary thing is that someone like V shrinks got all these fanboys who show up and support this and they seem to be oblivious to the fact that he doesn't actually know anything about lifting. Like literally, I know people who've been training for six months who have more knowledge of training than he does. Because they went to and took the time to learn the correct stuff. He literally has no clue what he's doing. And it's just weird that you get people, people will follow that still. Uh, the ironic thing, though, is that Jeff comes in, and at first I started watching Jeff's video, and I was going to be critical. I'm like, Jeff, why are you teaching flies at all? Seriously, you're a strength and conditioning coach. This is a virtually useless exercise in general. But what he broke down, the point that I liked is that after he started breaking it down, he says, but I'm not really a big fan of flies. I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that because I'm going to be honest, guys. Flies are not the key to getting a big, strong chest. That is not how you do it. Not going to get the job done. Uh, in fact, there are very, very few people I can think of who I would ever prescribe chest flies. I'm not saying there aren't a few people who might benefit from them, but the vast majority, probably not. Probably not. I know people are shrieking right now. Oh my God, how can you say that? You're just being anti-bodybuilding. No, I'm not even being anti-hypertrophy. Uh, they're just not the best choice. Lack of total stimulation, chances of injuries, connective tissue inflammation, better lifts. 
But he breaks it down that if you're going to do a fly because you want to get peak contraction, or if you're trying to train isometrics, this is how you do it. This actually works better. Here's peak contraction. This is getting sufficient resistance at peak contraction to actually stimulate hypertrophy. Because if you're doing it the way he's doing it, it's not going to work. So he kind of breaks down how to get into position so that you can start with a weight that you can get into a peak contraction position and a, and a crossover. And he breaks all of that down then explains, you know, how you can go do a different way if you wanted isometric training. Um, now, me personally, I think isometric training is completely 100% useless outside of sport specific applications. Like if you have a specific like arm bar that you need to do for MMA or whatever. Okay, I get that. I can I can understand some sports specific training for isometrics, but for general strength, general hypertrophy, uh, getting someone strong as a power lifter, a football player, a rugby player, things like that. I think isometric training is completely a waste of time. Also for hypertrophy guys, you're just trying to get big. It's a waste of time. Complete waste of time. But I do appreciate the fact that he breaks down that a chest fly is not an exercise he's particularly fond of. So there, that's, again, I can appreciate that. He comes in, breaks down the knowledge of physiology, this, this, and this, but I really don't like this exercise. All right, fair enough, because I think it's a worthless exercise for the most part, so I agree with that. But the question becomes, well, how does someone get a big chest? Um, this is pretty straightforward, guys. And here's the other thing. How many people out there want only a big chest and nothing else? Can you think of a single person on the face of the earth, other than Pamela Anderson and, you know, women with boob jobs, but men who want a big chest almost always want bigger arms too, don't they? Yeah? That pretty much universally agreed? I mean, how many guys you see walking around who say, man, my triceps are just too big for my chest? But if they bring their chest up, they're still going to want their triceps to grow too. All right, so how do you build a massive chest? I don't know. Why don't you spend the next two to three years getting as strong as you possibly can on your pause bench? Nova's going to give his input too. Nova, are you going to tell them how to get a big chest? Come in here. How do they get big chesticles? What? Weighted dips. Nova said weighted dips. He said if you do weighted dips, you'll be good to go. Big chest. Weighted dips. You're just saying that because you got a weight harness and you don't have hands to hold a barbell. So if you're a dog, weighted dips in your, your weighted vest is the way to go. Now, if you're not strength training your dog, get as strong as you possibly can on the pause bench. And I mean pause on your chest while staying tight. Get as strong as you can on the press. Again, let's go back to Jeff Cavalier tells you the standing barbell press is the shoulder press you should be doing. He says you don't sit and do it. It's like if you want to be athletic, stand and do your shoulder presses. Boom. I agree with that. I think the standing barbell press, also called just the press, is probably one of the single most productive exercises you can do. And yes, and it will build your upper chest. If you come all the way down, get that chest up, it will actually build your upper chest. Yeah? Get as strong as you possibly can on those two lifts and maybe weighted dips. I'm going to go with Nova on this. And weighted dips also. You get as strong as you possibly can with good form and full range of motion on those three exercises. And I promise you, you will have a respectable chest without touching a dumbbell, without touching a cable. And you know what? Here's the thing that will go with that. Not only will you have a big chest, you'll also have delts and triceps to hopefully go with it and you won't be a weak worthless piece of crap either you'll actually have some strength to go with it because here's the other thing what do we always say being big having size without strength so being big and still being weak is like having a big dick that won't get hard it's worthless it's absolutely worthless if you're going to take the time to get big, you might as well get strong and athletic to go with it. You might as well be able to be the part instead of just look the part. You're already going to come in and train. You're already going to get hurt. or Well, not hurt, injured, but you're already going to be hurting. You're already going to be sore. You're already going to be tired. You're already going to have to eat all this food. You might as well become strong and athletic with 
the same amount of time you just invested, you know? It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like, man, I've got to go into i got to pick blondes or brunettes. Well, you could just go ahead and have both. You know, you can have your cake and eat it too, guys. You don't have to pick. You don't have to go, man, I don't know, do I, I want to get big or do I want to get strong? Yes, do both. Do both. Not like you have to really invest more time to get both at the same time. You just might have to work a little harder. You might have to do something a little bit difficult. All there is to it. But you get strong at those three exercises, and I promise you, you will not have a lagging chest. You will not have a lagging chest. It'll be big, and you'll actually have other muscles to go with it. And you'll actually be strong. It's a free bonus. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.